All right, all right, all right. Greetings, my fellow bushy flops of earth dirt. My name's Hans, father of this indoor rainforest, obsessed with teal bricks, master creator of entire cities, and berserk for Legos. Today I'm going to show you guys this sleek and futuristic limousine, Paradisa City style. So postpone your wedding plans until 2060, put on your classiest of tuxedos, and ladies, your loveliest gala evening dresses, grab yourself a cucumber gimlet, and let's ride to the party. Onwards to the origin story. Hey, hey, hey. All right, so this limousine is my own mock, 100%. And I decided to create this limousine because I had a problem with all the limousines that LEGO City Sets have officially created. There's about three of them that LEGO has done so far. So the first one is 3222 Helicopter and Limousine from 2010. And it's a decent looking limousine. Yeah, it's got blacked out windows. It's got a good stretch to it. But uh, the major thing that I have with these limousines that LEGO has created is that they're only, they're only four studs wide. And four studs wide isn't a whole lot of room to work with. And of course, this was made in the 90s where all the vehicles were four studs wide. That would be acceptable because uh, that was the accepted scale at that time. But in sort of the mid 2000s, they really started to lean into six stud wide vehicles. Now, unfortunately, Lego, even to this day, still hasn't fully committed to a scale of six stud wide vehicles as a default standard. They still kind of pop up with these four stud wide cars. And so you get this kind of mishmash of, you know, some cars are six stud wide and some cars are four studs wide. And so the scale is off and it's pretty much all over the place when it comes to scale. And I think it's a little bit disappointing, especially for adult AFALs or any fan of LEGO who really cares about scale. I think when LEGO creates city sets, they really pander to more towards really young LEGO enthusiasts and in that crowd, you know, they don't really care about scale too much. And it seems like LEGO doesn't really try to strike a balance between young LEGO fans who don't really care about scale, but also LEGO fans who really do care about scale and proportions and all that stuff. And so I think LEGO influences their designers to be cost effective in their LEGO designs. In other words, design these sets more for 8 to, you know, 18 year old LEGO enthusiasts, and then also simplify the sets in a way that makes them more cost effective. And in doing so, it really kind of abandons or throws scale to the whim of things, which leaves a lot of us enthusiasts who really like a little bit of realism, and especially who like to follow a protocol of scale. Now, LEGO also did a limousine in a friend's LEGO set, 41107 Popstar Limousine in 2015. And that limo actually was six studs wide. I think the big reason why they did six studs wide was because they wanted to scale it to have all these features in there. That was definitely in the right direction. So my hat's off to that one. But then in 2016, 60102 Airport VIP Service, uh, another LEGO City official set. Again, it's they did a limousine in the four stud wide size. And then they did it again last year in 2020 with 60271, the main square set. Uh, so now this time we've got a beautiful black limousine, but again, it's in the four stud wide size scale. So I find this really mind boggling where LEGO is making six stud wide vehicles for us in a lot of applications. But when it comes to a limousine, the one vehicle where it, it actually makes sense to do six studs wide and they still won't do six studs wide. I say boo on that. All right and I invited another guest to the party. This is the black limousine from the Palace Cinema which I completely remocked. It's a beautiful little classic and I really loved how this remocking of it turned out. I think it looks amazing and I've actually already done a video on that so if you haven't seen the video to this I definitely recommend checking this out right after this video and of course I've also remocked the Palace Cinema itself. In fact these are in a playlist so yeah right after this go uh uh, go check those out. I think you'll like it. All right, so let's talk about the white limo. So first things first, you should probably know that I'm planning to build a Lego city named Paradisa City, a tropical city in the future in the year 2060. So of course, it's being in 2060, there's gonna be a lot of futuristic things in Paradisa City. And one of those things is battery electric vehicles. This limousine is an electric car. It's got a big battery running across the whole floor of the car itself. And the other thing that this car has is autonomous driving. It can completely drive itself. So this little robotic sensor right here indicates that it's a 5G connected and radar and LiDAR autonomous driving sensors across the car. So the chauffeur doesn't even have to drive. He just has to chill out and make sure that the guests in the back of the car are completely comfortable. And the other cool thing about this futuristic limousine is that it's got little glowing lights right here on the side, a little side emblem right there. I think in the future, cars are going to have like really cool lines of light that 
illuminate the car and the, the logos on the cars are going to illuminate. And another thing is that when they're charging the car, this little blue light will light up and show them how much the car has been charged. So another thing you should know about Paradisa City is that all the roads are underground and people don't really have cars. They get around through public transportation, but they also get around through bicycles and scooters and motorcycles and all that stuff. Cars are really rare, but because this is a sort of specialty vehicle, this limousine is something that operates down in the underground area of the autonomous roadways where all the vehicles are autonomous and they drive themselves and stuff like that. So citizens of Paradisa City, whether they're got a wedding going on or whether they're celebrities or special events or movie premieres or music concerts, political figures, or maybe the mayor of uh, Paradisa City or diplomats from another country, you know, this is, this is the limo for them. They get the special treatment. Yeah. And apparently so does this chameleon. All right, let's get into the needy greedy as Jack Black on uh, Nacho Libre likes to say. All right, so I've actually created created a protocols of scale for all my Lego vehicle mocks that I do. For majority of vehicles, they're all going to be six studs wide. I don't really do four studs wide, except for very, very compact cars, maybe the little smart cars. But I also don't go onto a scale that's too big. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm sticking with only these size wheels for regular ca city cars. I'm not really going with the speed champion tires. And I don't really go for the super jumbo sized truck tires when I do a lot of uh, truck mocks. And if you go check out the video for this black limousine, I also talk about my protocols of tire size scale, and I give lots of examples on what size tires I use for what size cars. So that's a major reason why I wanted to make this limousine is because of the six stud wide factor. The limousines that LEGO has made in those three sets just don't cut it for me, and I wanted to make my own limousine. I really like how this came out. So that being said, one of the big challenges about making LEGO vehicles is the structural stiffness of the chassis itself. I think any Lego designer that makes a car will tell you that they have designed these cars so that kids can play around with them and their kids like to push down on these cars. So if in any way that they push down and this whole car breaks and falls apart, that's not a good design. I do the exact same thing as I'm building these cars. I'm constantly testing them out to see if it's going to break somewhere down here by the wheels and collapse. For this, what it ended up doing was just using some plates. And of course, these plates are not structurally attached to the wheels like I do in most vehicles and one of the reasons why Lego creates dedicated Lego car chassis is for that exact reason is for that structural strength and I did try to use a couple of Lego chassis along the bottom here I even tried using the uh, the new chassis from the speed champions for the eight stud wide vehicles but then it had like these studs right here on the side and then I had to put a tile plate right there and then it just kind of looked awkward you just had this tile sticking out uh, so it didn't really work for me and so I just went back to the just some standard Lego plates and so what if I had to do differently is tie in the structure through the roof itself as well as on the other side of the car I'm using some really long one by bricks I think this is like a one by ten so the roof is kind of like one big component and if you were to push down on the roof it distributes the forces to the front and the back to right over the wheels and then that's what kind of gives it its structural rigidity another thing I like is the front end the front end is nice and long proportional to a long the long hood of a luxury car and the angular features of the bumper right there now for the headlights I am using a 1x2 transparent brick and then on top of that I'm using a 1x1 round transparent brick and uh, this is my opportunity to make a shout out to Lego and all the Lego designers working at Lego is I would love it if you guys make this piece transparent for headlights and taillights so we can have nice rounded lights at the corners of the car instead of these sharp angular corners as you can see here I've got an angled corner here and up here so yeah I've been wanting Lego to make this in a transparent yellow and transparent red color for a long time for a few years years now and I'm still patiently waiting so I hope Lego you're listening so that we can have less sharp corners on the uh, on the corners of our cars yeah now I really went with the sleekness of this futuristic limousine and instead of doing a big giant grill in the front of it I went for more of a luxurious thin and wide grill and then having the front hood kind of slope down even below the fender line so it almost kind of has like a, a sort of a Porsche kind of look to it but yeah it's a pretty sleek looking luxurious car now the other thing that I did was I used the Speed Champion wheel fenders here. And Lego has already kind of done that on a couple of cars, uh, which looks pretty neat. I actually really like this style of fender right here. And I really like how as the fender comes down towards the bottom of the car, the fender kind of fades away. And that's a lot more realistic. However, what I don't like is that it's not designed to fit these wheels. And because of it, you get these large gaps and openings that just don't look natural in modern day cars. So I thought I'd give a shout out to Lego designers over at Lego. Let's have a new fender for this size wheel, but 
has this style right here on it. This fender was designed in the early 2000s and was actually designed for a different tire. And I think this fender piece is really outdated now. It, I think it sticks out way too much. And the fact that it wraps all the way down to here instead of fading into the side of the car just gives it a, a bit of a goofy look in my opinion. So yeah, Lego designers, if you're listening, let's get some new fenders here that, that look like these. All right, and for the back of the car, I've given it more of the same angular design and features that you saw on the very front of the car. I gave it a very futuristic wraparound tail light that's very sleek. And I really like the back end of this car too, as it, it also looks really sleek to me. Now, one thing that's missing on the top of this car is a large sunroof. And the interesting thing is a lot of the town sets that LEGO made in the 90s, they had a special roof piece that had sunroofs. And they were putting sunroofs on a lot of cars, even diesel trucks and stuff like that. And I always thought that feature was really cool. But then in the late 90s and then when the 2000s came around, they kind of abandoned two major features. One was that the sunroof, because they got rid of that piece, that style of hinging for the roof pieces. Another thing they stopped doing was adding doors. So in the 90s, most of the vehicles had doors. They had doors and they also had sunroofs. They just kind of abandoned that. So I wish that would be something that Lego would, would kind of bring back is some sunroofs and then try harder to kind of put doors on all their cars. I like functionality. I like I like little, little features like that that operate and function when it comes to uh, Lego models. All right, so the interior, yeah. So obviously this is where the chauffeur sits. There's no steering wheel. It's a car of the future. It drives itself, but he's got a computer screen to operate the car and do whatever he needs. So maybe while he's chilling in the car, waiting hours on end for his guests to come back from their event, uh, he can just chill and use the computer and do all kinds of listen to music, watch YouTube. Obviously his favorite YouTube channel is Teal Bricks and Parodies. All right, so you can see how having the six studs really gives uh, room and space right so in real limousines they can get like I don't know six to eight people in there sometimes and of course you know a lot of limousines also have like a small bar area for drinks so I've actually managed to get three seats in here although one of them is not functional um, so I got two seats right here and of course I've got a third seat over here but because of the roof line of the window I can't put a minifigure in there because the window blocks the room for their head in the corners here I've got um, a little coffee cup and then over here I've got a cocktail drink and I've got a a couple of wine bottles over there and of course the occupants have their own touch screen as well so i'm using the nougat colored to give the appearance of luxurious leather and of course this is a movie actress on her way to a movie premiere so here you can see i've got a couple of minifigures in there and just put on the roof and there you have it so what do you think guys? Are you the kind of person to choose the white limo or are you the kind of person to choose the classic automobile? Let me know in the comments. I don't know. I mean, I might have days where I definitely want to cruise in this guy, but I also might have days or events where I'd love to cruise around in this guy. And definitely go check out the video on this one if you haven't already seen it. So updates for my progress on some of the mocks that I'm working on. The Grand Emporium expansion, completely new mock because I don't actually own the set. I'm actually piecing it together from my own pieces and completely changing up the design. It still looks like a Grand Emporium, of course, but it's uh, my own unique twist to it. So I ran into a trouble spot, but I think I've come up with a workaround to that, which I'm kind of glad about. I'm also working on the Brick Bank expansion. I just started that a couple of days ago, and I'm super excited. Yeah, it's it's looking cool. It's got some it's got some personal history to it too. I can't wait to finish that so I can show you guys on my Brick Bank expansion. So yeah, and as you can see, the sun kind of went down, or it's just my plants blocking the sunlight. Hope you guys enjoyed my limo and. Uh, on that note, I'll catch y'all later.